there was a knot. I understand what the knot in the front is. Uh, what it's totally thing? Totally the guy. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yep. All right. So. Cool. So. Introduce myself. Yeah. My name is Michael Dickinson. I am the alternative, sustainable, and exotic wood sourcing specialist. Because I like to tell everybody I'm the only person with the word exotic in their title that gets to keep their clothes on. Okay. You can edit that out. That's fine. But we're going to turn it off. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So, if you go back three, four hundred years, the British were in uh, what is now Belize. Um, they were cutting mahogany and Spanish cedar and all sorts of other woods down. And to get it from the forest to the shoreline, they had to float it down the rivers. The heaviest, densest logs would sink to the bottom. And eventually, 300 plus years later, somebody went, well, instead of cutting down new trees, why don't we do two things? We'll clean up the waterways so boats can get up and down, um, and we'll have a resource that was cut down years ago, and we don't have to cut down any more trees. Ballpark anywhere from 150 to 400 years old. I mean, some of the logs we get are th that pull up are only two foot round and some of them are six foot round. You know, back in the day, they knew that certain weights would sink, so they would cut the log to a specific length for whatever they needed once it got to the shore. So the rivers in Belize, the big ones, they just have historical records that say we know it went from the forest to the shore. So then they take boats, they go up the river, they go so far, they send a diver down and he basically, the water's actually relatively clear um, and they can see the logs at the bottom. And once they see the logs, um, they set up a little camp and they'll stay there for a few days. And so basically, if we can use the mics here as an example, so they'll find a tree about 30, 40 yards offshore over here and find a tree 30 or 40 yards offshore over here. And they will run a line between the two and then run a chain and pulley system down. The diver takes that chain and pulley, goes underneath, wraps the log, and then they pull it up hand over hand by hand and, and the suction is amazing. I mean, it's really hard to describe. Just 300 plus years of sediment falling on top of it. It seeded itself in all that dirt, so it goes pop, and then it goes easy. And then once they have it above the water, they throw another line on top of it, and then they drag it up onto shore. So the next step in the process is basically, now you have to get it to the sawmill, and that's never easy. Uh, from the sawmill, uh, they then, like I said, they'll cut it into lumber and then it ends up in Pennsylvania, smaller lumber, and then it ends up here and we cut it into the parts and the pieces. The, the cells in a, in a tree are amazing. Even when they're dead, they still function a little bit. So all that sediment has settled into all the parts and pieces of that tree, um, almost like if it were fossilizing. So in the pores of sinker mahogany you see these little itty bitty black specks so one the trees were old so they're heavier and denser the forest was denser when you have a dense forest your trees fight each other for sunlight and water and nutrients so the trees are darker in color uh, and the growth rings are closer together and then in the pores of every piece now has all this little sediment which also makes the wood denser which gives you a wider tonal range as comparison to standard modern day mahogany. We've noticed all over like just a wider tonal spectrum especially uh, you know mahogany is very voice friendly it's good singer songwriter um, guitars uh, the sinker also tends to be a little more deeper in the bass response, and I think that's the most shocking. When it's a little higher treble, people go, oh, that's nice, but when you hit that bass string for the first time and you do your first G chord on that guitar, it's like, wow. You know, you feel it in the bass in your chest, and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what all that sediment has done.
down in the machine room, they have a nickname for it. They call it stinker mahogany. And yeah, when you are working it and you're cutting it on the bandsaw, it's like if you can imagine angering a hundred skunks at one time, I mean, the place just stinks horribly. Everybody's got their masks on, it's like, but it's not harmful, it just smells bad. That's about it.